What's up, everybody? Uh, so there's a story that uh, I didn't get to talk about it on uh, my show this week. We didn't get to it on Crystal Kylan Friends, but it's a pretty important one and it's blowing up. So I wanted to talk about it here. Um, the DNC was supposed to hold a vote on uh, whether or not they're going to take dark money. And apparently they punted on that and they didn't even hold the vote. So tell everybody what happened and then we'll discuss it a little bit. Yeah, so it's interesting. The lever, uh, credit to David Sirota and the folks over there for uh, paying attention to this story. He had the, the scoop that the DNC was facing a vote on dark money. And what this would have, um, this resolution would have been basically the bare minimum. It's not even like don't take dark money or don't accept dark money whatsoever. It was literally just in Democratic primaries let's say no to dark money because obviously you've got the argument of democrats don't want to unilaterally disarm once they're up against republicans but okay within your own primaries you could have it as a policy that it's frowned upon at the very least for candidates to benefit from dark money um can i this, stop you for one second yes so just so everybody understands dark money is just it's kind of misleading because when people say oh i want to get dark money out of elections you think like what they're trying to say is i want to get like money out of elections, like corporate money, billionaire money, but that's actually not what it means. Dark money is just money that a candidate or a party takes that like you don't know who's donating it. Yes. So there's no disclosure. So, so there's usually, no transparency. To get super specific, usually what happens is you have these 501c4 organizations, which are technically not supposed to be primarily political, but there's a million loopholes that these groups use to spend lots of money as outside groups in these elections. This just happened in that primary in New York where that guy, I think his name is Dan Goldman, just one who's like the Levi Strauss heir. And there was a lot of dark money undisclosed, don't know where or who it came from, that flooded into that race that helped push him over the top narrowly over a more progressive challenger. So that's just one instance. And that's why this matters is because the dark money has been coming in overwhelmingly, of course, on the side of corporate Democrats who try to defeat more progressive or lefty Democrats in these primaries. So the Nevada Democratic Party chair, and remember Nevada had that like Bernie sort of takeover um, of their state party. They're the ones that were pushing this resolution among others to, again, not say we're unilaterally disarming, no dark money period, but just in democratic primaries, let's say no to dark money. Guess what happened? <laughs> the DNC resolutions committee decided not to take a vote at all on that resolution for the DNC to ban dark money in primary elections. In her argument for the vote, uh, Nevada Dem Chair Judith Whitmer says dark money has, quote, let our elections devolve into auctions rather than elections. And this is from um, Aaron uh, Navarro, who is with the CBS News Political Unit, who's been following this. So um, here's why they did that. They didn't even want to get people on the record so that everybody knows who the villains are. It's sort of like how Gavin Newsom punted on Medicare for all without even having a vote. It's like, it's one thing to allow it for a vote and then it fails. Yeah. Right? Which would suck and we would condemn that. But to not even allow it for a vote is the ultimate pussy way out. Because it's like now we can't even say, oh, so you're the bad guy and you're the bad guy and you're the bad guy right. and you're the bad guy. Yeah. Well, it also just exposes that for a lot of the establishment Democrats, all the rhetoric about like money and politics, it's, <laughs> they're just full of shit. I mean, they, when it benefits them and their ideological project of like destroying the left, they're happy to take it. They don't want to do anything about it because here, like the Supreme Court's not an issue. Republicans aren't an issue. You know, existing law's not an issue. They can in and of themselves police how the party operates. And they're like, no, we want dark money because why? It benefits the corporate establishment Democrats who are in power dark money has been flooding into these primaries to crush the left and they want to keep it that way so but they don't want it to be exposed that that's what they actually think so that's why they just don't even have a vote on it whatsoever yeah and i'm gonna go a step further because honestly i think that like all of this is bullshit so i think everybody's a hypocrite on this there, there's degrees obviously and there's a spectrum as to who's bad and who's worse and stuff but um as far as I know, nobody's actually taken like the only pledge that I think is worth anything, which is I only raise through small dollar donations because 
there's a million different ways you can raise money, whether you're a political party or an individual candidate or whatever, and, or like a super PAC, which spends on behalf of a candidate, right? But like they could, people could take corporate PAC money, uh, billionaire money, there, there's all different like avenues where they can donate. And even for the people who say, I don't take like, I took the no corporate PAC money pledge. And that was one of the things that we originally came up with with Justice Democrats was yeah. like, if you don't take corporate PAC money, that that's a good sign that you're like a decent politician. Turns out, no, because you could still say, I don't take corporate PAC money, but then you also take billionaire money. Or you take corporate money through a different source that's not through the PAC. Yeah. So then, you know, we came up with that pledge and then we realized there was a few, at, at one point there was 40 people running taking the no corporate PAC money pledge and there's even like a no corporate PAC money caucus. But it doesn't really mean much because again, they just found ways to take money that's like circumventing that. Yeah. So the only, so the only pledge that actually makes sense under the system is like, I only raise through small dollar donations, but then you get to the other problem, which is you are severely handicapping yourself if you do that. That's yeah. which is why the unilateral disarmament argument, even though it's total bullshit, there's also a grain of truth in it, which is like, if you want to win, like it's so hard unless you get a lot of national press and a lot of national attention right. and you can talk about the fact that I'm the only one that's not corrupt. I'm the only one who's raising through small dollar donors in a situation like that. I'm optimistic. You can kind of make up the difference through regular people, but generally speaking, some random congressperson running for district 17 in California or whatever the fuck, they're not right. going to be able to do it. That's so, right. That's right. So the whole si honestly, the whole system is bullshit because you know, you're just, you just, you're captured by by this big money system. And then here we're talking about literally a bare minimum tweak around the edge. Just in democratic primaries, just let's ban, like let's have transparency for all of the donors. And they're like, no, no. let's not do that. Let's not do that. And we don't even have the courage to like defend why right. we disagree yeah. with this. We're just gonna punt and not take a vote on it because they know they are total hypocrites and that they're total, totally full of shit. I do feel like this issue is one that is so core, like when we talk about threats to democracy and these sorts of things, like this is so core to, um, you know, the, all of the various problems undermining our democracy. It's so core to the corruption that has undermined our democracy and, you know, as a result, undermine people's faith in our democracy. And I also feel like it's an issue that's just sort of like fallen off the table. Um, Democrats don't really talk about it anymore. It's sort of, you know, they had that original push when they took back control, we're going to have some reforms. Of course, they knew that that wasn't going to be able to pass. And then since then, they just like are silent on it. And I think there's a lot of, uh, even among activists, there's a sense of like, gosh, what can we even do given what the Supreme Court has ruled at this point? Yeah. And you're referring to HR1, right? The, mm -hmm. That had a lot of great provisions in it. If it passed, it would have been yeah. really something, but it didn't. Right. And so and then they're we like, well, we tried. There you go. Yeah. It's rough because, yeah, this is this is like the issue that births all other problems in the country. It is. It's and uh, and like you said, we're so behind the eight ball because the Supreme Court has effectively ruled in a number of cases starting in 1978 with Buckley versus Vallejo um, that money is speech. And so you have a constitutional right to donate as much money as you want to politicians. So, I mean, think about that. If, if that equals free speech, then what they're saying is billionaires like the Koch brothers or George Soros or whoever, they have a louder voice than anybody else in the country. Yeah, they're entitled to have right. a louder voice by like, you know, orders of magnitude, not even close. Which is crazy. So yeah, disgusting decision. I would have rather they had a vote and then we know who the bad guys are, but they didn't even do that because they're massive cowards and they're massive pussies and Hashtag they're useless. Force the vote. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs>